Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Everybody doing good? Yeah. Say hello to the person next to you. Find out their names. Make sure you know their names. Great to see all of you here tonight. Amen. Joe, good to see you back there. It's a great night to come together and worship together. And, uh, yeah. Amen. you know, God's doing a lot of different things, a lot of miracles. Yes, he does. He's moving behind the scenes in the world today. Even if we don't see it. God says to all of us, anticipate his coming back at any time. Be ready. Get ready. Be ready. Amen. So hopefully we are ready, every one of us here in this room. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you for this wonderful place that you provided for 40 some years thank you that the air conditioning works thank you that the sound is working tonight thank you for the HIPAA filters that are working thank you for the band that's here the worship team thank you for the ushers and thank you Lord for every person that you have here tonight May you be glorified. May you be honored. Lord, may our lives be like a sweet, sweet aroma in your throne room tonight, Lord. If there's anything that we need to ask forgiveness for, that we'd ask forgiveness, Lord, any sin in our life, we'd confess it and turn away from it, and we'd turn towards you tonight. Turn towards Jesus. Have the mind of Christ, the scriptures say. And everything, give thanks. Lord, that we can rejoice in you always. Again, Paul says, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. So fill this house with the presence of the Holy Spirit tonight. Right. Amen. Fill this house. Fill our hearts. You tell us not to be drunk with wine, to be, but to be filled with your spirit. That we'd be filled with your spirit. There'd be great sounds of renewal in this room. Great sounds of transformation taking place. People would be drawing closer to you in a mighty and powerful way. So be with us tonight, Lord. Anybody that needs a healing, that you would heal them, Lord, spiritually, physically, psychologically. Heal them. Set them free. Set your people free. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. If you want to stand, please stand. If you want to sit, sit. Let's worship the Lord together. Yeah, stand if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Okay, amen. Breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me, breathe on us, Lord, breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me, because I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me, I come alive, I'm you breathe on me. Awake, awake, awake my soul. God resurrect these bones from death to life to you alone. Awake my soul. Awake, awake. Word of God, speak to me, 
Word of God, speak to me. Speak to me. Word of God, speak to me. As I come alive, I'm alive when you speak to me. Ain't that the truth? I'm alive, I'm alive when you speak to me. Awake, awake, awake my soul. God resurrect these bones from death to life through you alone. Awake my soul. Awake, awake, awake. Resurrect these bones from death to life through you alone. Awake my soul. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to breathe on us tonight. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breath of God, breathe on me. Cause I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. Yeah. I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. Awake, awake, awake my soul. Spirit-filled coffee, Lord. Amen. Fling wide you heavenly gates. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. Come right on your people's praise. Let the King of glory in let the king of glory in fling wide you heavenly gates let the king of glory in let the king of glory in come right in on your people's praise let the king of glory in the King of glory It's time for the sleepers to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. I hear the Spirit say, It's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine. I hear the Spirit say, it's time. Not later, tonight. Bling wide you. Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in, come right in, on your people's praise. Let the King of Glory in, let the King of Glory in. 
Knocking on the door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what is he going to do? He will come in tonight. And he'll have supper with you. <laughs> That's great, amen. Melt the hardest heart. Who can melt the hardest heart? Speak life into my soul. Who can spin the world around? And 
can hold me ever close. No one.
our heart and his spirit renews us and makes us be born again as his children and when you're his child all you want to do is worship Father, how blessed we are to be your children. May we cry out your praise, for if we don't, even the rocks will. Father, we look so forward to being with you together soon. But until then, Lord, let us be your lights. And let us be your words spread out to this dark world, that you are alive and you are well and you change lives. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, um, that song talked about hardened hearts. You know, if anybody has a hardened heart, you know, we need to have God just soften it. Glory to God, amen. You know, soften it. Yes, Lord. Lord, melt us, Lord. Jesus. Or melt. Storms are here and storms are coming, right? Yeah. Never Anybody ends. have any trials this week? Yeah. Couple. Couple. <laughs> we need God's help always, right? Amen. We need his help. So a uh, couple things coming up. You have a flyer, this flyer right here. Everybody have one? If you don't, the ushers will get you one. We'll get you one back there. On Friday night, we have our Friday night movie coming up July 30th at 6.30, right here at the church. You know, unfortunately, but Christians aren't ready. And so, working to disprove the Christian faith of his wife, the an investigative journalist chases down the biggest story of all time with unexpected life-changing results. And this is based on a, you know, best-selling book, and it's a great movie, you know, is the resurrection of Jesus truth or hoax? It's truth. But he goes out to disprove it as a skeptic, as a mocker, like so many people are. And so um, put this on your refrigerator as a reminder to you. Invite other people to come and join us um, Friday, July 30th. Okay, next one is the baptism, this one right here. Okay, the baptism is coming up. Sunday, July 25th at 1 o'clock. You know, how many of you, anybody here not been baptized as an adult? Raise your hand. Anybody? Put them on the Everybody's been baptized as an adult? <laughs> then we'll have a great picnic. Either way, we'll have a full, you know, great picnic. But really pray about it if you've never been baptized, that you would come forward on that day to be baptized. And uh, if not... Then we'll be down at Crown Point around 1 o'clock. You know, it's um, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs. And, you know, if anybody wants to bring a side dish, bring a side dish. And we'll just worship the Lord together. The band's going to be there. We're going to worship and praise him. 
So that's another one. Now, um, you also have a July calendar, okay? Tells you all the events that are going on during the month of July. If you haven't got one, they're back there. Um, pick one up before you leave. And then daily walks. If you don't have a daily walk, you know, we got plenty of them back there, you know, and it's for July, August, and September. Just takes you through some scriptures every day, gets you into God's word. So these are for you in the back, and uh, grab one as you leave uh, tonight. Anybody have a praise report that they would like to share with the body tonight? Anything going on that you like to give God praise for tonight? Doug, you have something? Amen. Same yesterday, today, and forever, isn't he? And his word is truth. Yes, Trina. So there's growth taking place, right? There's growth taking place. Amen. Alma. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. I think I know you. Usually come Sunday. Go ahead, Susan. Night and day. Night and day. Yeah. And, and of course, Amen. I put it away and had a wonderful time and everything. And it just hit me that, oh my God, it's like your friends and your family. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just salt and light. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And if they hated me, Jesus said, they'll hate you. You will be persecuted for your stand for Christ. And that's happening victory today. In Jesus. Anybody else? Victory, victory in Jesus. Yes, Sarah. All right, it's good to Amen. see you. All Thank right. You. Amen. Thank All right, you. Rick. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Amen. 63 years, and he's not done with it yet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not done with it yet. Amen. 
Praise yeah. God. All right. Does everybody have a Bible or the scriptures on your cell phone? If you don't own a Bible, take one of those back there. Should we sit down? Yeah. Okay. And um, Will will take the offering, receive the offering. If you have any offering, he'll just walk by, put it in the bucket. You know, last week was July weekend, and um, people forget about tithes and offerings on July 4th. So pray about your giving before the Lord. And uh, he knows. You know, he knows what you're going through. He knows what's happening in your life. And uh, he says, give and it'll be given unto you. So he'll take the offering. I want you to open up your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. You know, last week uh, we kind of got to the end of chapter 2 in the book of Acts. And... Uh, we need to remember who is the head of the body of Christ. Who is it? Jesus. He is the head, right? We are underneath his, we've submitted ourselves to his lordship in our lives. Your life will bear fruit as you come under his lordship. Okay, so Colossians 1.28 says, We proclaim him. We proclaim who? Jesus, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom that we may present every man complete in Christ. Okay? The job of the church. We want to present every man complete in Christ. We admonish. We exhort. We, you know, encourage. Um, teaching them with all wisdom. And then go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And it says, He, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. Praise his name. Amen. So he is the head of the body. Praise him. Not me, not, you know, anybody Praise else. Lord. He is the head of the body. And it says he's the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. Unfortunately, he doesn't have first place in everything in our lives. We get other things in the way. You know, it could be money, it could be family, it could be any number of different things. Jobs, you know, that, that takes place before him. If everything, if you put him in first place, then everything else will line up for you. But if he's not first place, then you're in trouble. Tell the person next to you, you're in trouble. Big trouble. He needs to be first place in everything. You know, I was reading this article. There was a sign on the desk of a Pentagon official. And it read, The secrecy of my job does not permit me to know what I am doing. What? What? Who's on first? Yeah, who's on first? But the church, the heartbeat of the church, is not a secret. Lord. It's not a secret. God tells us plainly about our ministry and what our ministry should be as the body of Christ. And so we are created for God's glory. We, we are created to have fellowship with God, to, give him, to bring him honor and glory and praise. So you can check. Your life, are you bringing honor and glory to praise and praise to Jesus? If you're not, then he's not first place. Something else has gotten in front of that, right? He wants to be Lord of our lives, every one of us here in this room. And the word Lord means to rule supreme. Is he ruling supreme, like on a throne room of your life, or have we put other things on the throne room? Of our lives. Yeah. I saw somebody, I mean, they had this really fancy car. It was really old, like 1930s or something. And it was all polished and it was all neat. And he was driving around all prideful. People were honking, look at my car. Woo! 
wanting the praise of, you know, everybody just, You know, and that car had become his God. And God says, submit, in the scriptures, submit to God, resist Satan, and he will what? Submit to God. Give him total control of your life. Submit to God. If you're not willing to do that, then there won't be any growth in your life. There won't be any fruit in your life if you're not willing to submit to his lordship. You won't bear fruit. And so we willingly come to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And we want to glorify him in everything. And so here are some statements of ministry. I want you to write these down really quickly. The foundation of ministry, the foundation of ministry is character. Character, write it down, character. And I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. We're going to really jam through some of these scripture verses. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. I love what it says here. It says, Watch over your heart. Be careful. Watch over your heart. Amen. Do it with all diligence. You know, be careful about what books you're reading, what you're watching on your, on your cell phone, you know, Netflix and all these other things. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. You know, character. You all have character. You know, and you're... Really a character, you know. Steve is really a character. He always has great jokes, you know. Sometimes I laugh, sometimes I don't. But the foundation of ministry is not how much education you have or how much skills you have, but it's character, it's integrity. That's a foundation, okay? And so write this down. The nature of ministry is service. Service, you know, not taking, but giving to others. You want to see someone that's really glowing with the Lord? Man, that person is involved in serving other people. If you're not serving, then you become self-righteous, and you become prideful, and a bunch of other things. As you serve, man, you, you take it on the character of Christ. Because what does it say? Turn to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 43. Talking about don't lord over people, but it is not so among you. God's family doesn't operate like the world does, as Susan was sharing earlier. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your what? Servant. Shall be your servant. Amen. You know, um, Will's been, you know, doing a lot of stuff around the building. And, you know, not a lot of people know what he's been doing because he's doing it during the week. But, you know, just, uh, you know, he takes time to clean and he takes time to, you know, get some, what are they called, cuties and apples and you know, get the bread out there, take care of the food bank, all kinds of things, and nobody ever sees. And I'm going, wow, what a great servant. You know, I saw him last week. No, don't take away his praise, Mike. But I got here last week at 11 o'clock, and he's in the back, and he and it's like 100 degrees outside, and his shirt's all full of sweat, and sweat pouring down everywhere. And he's out there sweeping up all the uh, garbage and all the, the leaves that have fallen on the ground to really make it look great. And I'm going, when I grow up, I want to be like Will. <laughs> be a servant. And that's what Jesus says here. He says, hey, if you wish to become great, you shall be your servant, and verse 44, and whoever wishes to be first among you 
shall be the servant or the slave of all. Amen. Serving others. Serving others. I mean, God wants his body to serve one another, to really love on one another. And that's number three. The motive for ministry is love. Amen. What does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. I, wouldn't it be great? It, you know, if God were to take us home, that we would see every person here in this room, in heaven, in God's throne room one day. You know? The ministry, the motive of ministry is love. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 says, Since, so it's, it's happening, that's the word since, you have in obedience to the truth, in obedience to the truth, you have purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. And then he tells us again, fervently love one another from the heart. Fervently love one another. Man, if you love one another from the heart fervently, you're going to see your life change. You're going to see the life of others change. They can't help but see your service. They can't help but see your love. That's exactly right. And so that adds, comes to number four, which is the measure of ministry is sacrifice. You know, in some ways it requires sacrifice because, you know, we will all want to be served, right? Yeah. Hey, serve me. And Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Why aren't you serving me? I need to be served. Romans 12.1 says, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. You know, spiritual service of worship. And he just told us, man, you want to be first in God's kingdom, or if in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, he says, be the servant of all, right? Don't lord it over. Be the servant of all. So sacrifice. And here's another verse. Hebrews 13, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16 says, And do not neglect doing good and sharing. Amen. Don't neglect doing good and sharing. And then he continues on, and he says, For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Doing good, sharing, encouraging, uplifting people, fervently love one another. He says, With these, God is pleased. You want to please God? Sacrifice, serve, love. And then number five on your outline, the authority of ministry is submission. Man, so much haughtiness and pride. You know, God's got to break us of that, right? He says submission in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians 5, 21. You know, this is a chapter that, uh, it's a great chapter, and it talks about the husbands and the wives a lot in this chapter. But before he gets to that, he says in verse 21, be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. That's submission. You know, I, I mean, it's easy for a wife to follow her husband if her husband is submitted to Christ, first of all, in the fear of Christ, submitted to Christ. Amen. And then it says, 
wives be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. And then the husband is the head of the wife. And, you know, you read through this whole chapter, but it talks about, starts with submission, submitting ourselves, not haughtiness or pride, not lording over, as he said in the book of Mark. So what is the purpose of ministry number six? It's to glorify God. God wants us to glorify him. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and I could have chosen many verses on each of these different things about what is the church supposed to be like, but in, in uh, Isaiah, chapter 42, it says in verse 8, I am the Lord. Isaiah 42, 8. How about if tonight you heard like this? I am the Lord. Would that wake you up? Wake us up. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another. Satan, you do not get the glory. Nor will I give my praise to graven images. He says, Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. In verse 10, he says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to his praise from the end of the earth. Verse 11, Let the wilderness and the cities lift up their voices. Sing aloud, Selah, sing aloud to the Lord. Let them shout for joy from the tops of the mountains. And then verse 12, here it is. Let them give glory to the Lord. And declare his praise in the coastlands in San Diego. Let us give glory to the Lord. Think about your life. Are you giving glory to the Lord in your life? In everything you do, do your work heartily as unto the Lord. Are you giving glory and praise to the Lord? If not, you're going to hear, What are you doing? Those watching online just jumped out of their seats. Jeremiah 45. <clears throat> Jeremiah 45, verse uh, 4. It says, Thus you are to say to him, Thus says the Lord, <clears throat> Behold what I have built, and I am about to tear down. What I have planted, I am about to uproot. That is the whole land. But you, <clears throat> talking to everybody, but you, are you seeking great things for yourself? Are you building up your own kingdom? <coughs> Are you building great things for yourself? He says, Behold, do not seek them. I am going to bring disaster on all flesh, declares the Lord. But I will give you life to you as booty in all the places where you may go. Now, he's pointing out there that God is zealous for his glory. And he wants us to give him the glory in everything. That's what ministry is all about. <coughs> Turn to James chapter 5, verse 16. <coughs> the next point. Number seven, the tools. What are the tools of ministry that all of us should have? <clears throat> James 5.16. It says this. You can look up all these verses later. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man, a righteous woman, can accomplish much. And then, 
He talks about his word. His word is what? Living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Thank you, Sandy. It's only been my secretary for 35 years. <laughs> so God's word is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, right? So the tools of our ministry is prayer and God's word, prayer and scripture. We should be praying all the time. In season and out of season, we should be praying. We should read God's word on a daily basis. We need to be filled up with God's word, don't we? God's word, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. Some people fill their mind up with psychology. That's not God's word. You know, all kinds of false things out there, false philosophies. That's the world. Prayer and God's word. That's the balance we need to have. You want to live a balanced life? Get into God's word. Pray. Pray. You know, uh, John here, I think in the last couple of years since we started prayer, I don't think he's missed but one or two times. And he's here all the time, praying, 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 praying. Hallelujah. You know, on Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, Friday nights at 5, and then after church on Saturday, he's praying. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's a good example of how we need to be in prayer. As much prayer as we can possibly have. And then praying for one another. We've seen some great miracles take place as we pray for one another. That's what God wants us to do. That's the tools of ministry. Amen. And then the privilege of ministry is number eight, and that is spiritual growth. Man, what a blessing to see praise reports, to see spiritual growth taking place. Thank you, Jesus. Are you the same as you were ten years ago, five years ago, two years ago? You know, this, this uh, afternoon my daughter as one of those monitors that she can see what David's doing when she put him down for a nap. David Jeffrey. He's only, how old is he now? Five months old. So she can watch him. And, you know, she said, hey, you know, can you go upstairs because, you know, David's arm is sticking out of the crib. And could you go in there really quiet? So I go in there really quiet, you know, and he's there and he's just having a great time smiling, you know, so I'm tickling him. How you doing, David? How you doing? You're, sh you're supposed to be asleep. You know, and she said, move him back to the center of the bed. So I moved him back to the center of the crib, you know, and he's back there and he, he just, he was not having sleep. He said, I'm not going to sleep. God bless him. Amen. And he was just smiling away, and I'm going, whatever you want, David Jeffrey, you got it, whatever you want. And so then I left, right? I walked out of the room quietly. And, and my daughter sends me an email. She had recorded the whole thing on her phone. And she says, you know, you were supposed to creep in quietly so that he would go back to sleep. Well, that I didn't quite have that down. But I was thinking, if you were 20 years old, would you still be like that little six-month-old baby? Or have you grown up? Have you matured? Hopefully we've matured. Hopefully we've grown up, right? We're not the same spiritually that we were years and years and years ago. So Second Timothy or Second Peter chapter three verse eighteen. But grow, man. It's it's fun to watch David grow. 
He's actually becoming a human being, <laughs> smiling and, you know, his own little language and everything. Grow! Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow! Grow up! So many Christians haven't grown up, man. They're still selfish. They're still self-centered. They're still self-righteous. They're still prideful. They haven't grown up. There's, you know, I mean, the fruits of the Spirit should be love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. We should be growing in those different areas, right? Spiritual growth. How can we do it on our own? We can't. But guess what? Number nine, we have the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. The power of the Holy Spirit. We took a look at it a couple weeks ago. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And then in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, I don't know if that's on that outline there. Zechariah 4, 6, that says, Not by might, nor, not by my might, nor my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Right. But by my spirit, says the Lord. And so who is the head of the body? Jesus. Christ, Who's the head of the church? The Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Who's the model for ministry? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Philippians 2.15, or 2.5, excuse me. You shall have this attitude in you. Have the mind of Christ. The and that's our goal. Have the mind of Christ. Have the mind of Christ. He wants us to have the mind of Christ. And so all these different principles are things that we can apply to our lives and that leads to the four heartbeats my mom had a um, she had to go to the hospital to check out her pacemaker and the heart specialist was there and you know the heart specialist hooked up the thing and was listening to her heart was it beating mom God bless her. yeah it was beating God bless her. Amen. and the doctor said I cannot believe you are almost 90 years old. Your heart is doing really good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it could be all that walking I make her do to go to the Padre game, you know, but <laughs> walking, you know, and still working. I mean, it, it's helping her heart. But the heartbeat of the church, what is the heartbeat of the church? Like going to the doctor, listening to your heart. What is the heartbeat of the church? We started this last week. We should be, write it down, a worshiping church. A worshiping church. Glorifying God. And in Acts chapter 2, go back to Acts chapter 2. It doesn't hurt to go through it. It says, in verse 42... And they were continually devoting themselves the to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Amen. Continually, steadfastly, they were of one mind, one accord. Man, they have full-hearted devotion. It was a worshiping church. We should be a worshiping church, right? Jesus. And then it says in verse 43... Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. Man, there was power in that church. They were feeling a sense of awe. And there were signs and wonders, miracles taking place. Man, wonders, signs, miracles. I mean, nobody, they you know, forget about themselves. There's a song I was thinking we sing, forget about ourselves. You know, they... They were just concentrating on Jesus and seeing the awesomeness of God, and it was spontaneous. It was exciting what was taking place. In verse 46, and day by day, they were continuing with one mind in the temple. See, they were still going to the temple. And breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together. 
with gladness and sincerity of heart. You know, at the baptism, we'll start taking our meals together again. You know, they were expressing joy, laughing, clapping, praising, singing, you know, giving of their finances. I mean, you can worship God in all kinds of different ways. Does God care if you're on your knees or if you're sitting in the chair, if you're standing up, lifting up your arms? No. He just wants you to worship him. It's the heart. Amen. It's the heart. Amen. Amen. John 4.24 says, Worship him in spirit and in truth. As we worship God, we're renewed. Our minds, our hearts are renewed. It's like, man, when I take a shower, I feel so fresh and clean. You know? That's what happens when we worship. We feel fresh and clean and renewed. And, you know? I mean, that's what we should be doing. Second major objective, second major heartbeat of the church is God's word, instructing church. God says... You know, they were devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. And remember in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for what? Teaching, reproof, correction, and <clears throat> training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. So that verse that I read earlier in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. We proclaim him, God's word, instructing church. We proclaim him, admonishing, teaching every man with all wisdom that we may present every man complete in Christ. And then he says, for this purpose I labor, striving according to the power which mightily works within us. That's the Holy Spirit, Glory. mightily working within us. If you have God's spirit, then you're going to be encouraged and exhorted sometimes reproved right. sometimes corrected so that Amen. you would grow up and mature right Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. we need food but the food we need is spiritual food there's a lack of spiritual food today a lack of spiritual food you know um there's so many benefits of studying god's word but just a couple of them, it causes our faith to grow. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing from what? The Word of God. It causes our faith to grow. It stabilizes us because we all go through trials. Every person here goes through trials. We need God's Word to instruct us, to encourage us. It helps us. God's Word, there is so much false doctrine in our world today false churches false teaching so we need God's word to help us detect error confront error and then God's word helps us in our fears because God's not a God of fear but of might power and what a sound mind Anybody here superstitious? Donnie, you're superstitious. A lot of us have been superstitious. You know, like black cats. If a black cat runs into your path, something's terrible going to happen to you. I don't see that anywhere in God's word. Or Friday the 13th. Or how about walking under a ladder? There's so many other superstitions, but we live by the truth of God's word, don't we? We live by God's word. You know, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. So the Bible's full of benefits and truths to live by strengthens us, encourages us. We need to be careful that we don't become self-righteous, that we don't become pious, you know, um, puffed up. 
Because remember, there was a group of people in the first century that were very pious and puffed up. And, and <coughs> Jesus called them hypocrites, oh. called them blind oh. guides, oh. all kinds of other things. You know, so being puffed up can breed intolerance. It can breed idolatry, indifference, pride. That's why we need the wisdom and discernment that God's word gives us. So the third heartbeat. Mom, your heart's still beating? <coughs> Faster. The, she's, she's going, hurry up, Dave, I'm hungry. The pacemaker's functioning. Here's the third heartbeat of the church, that we should be an evangelistic church. Let's do it. Amen. Not just, you know, ingrown... You know, we don't want any more people to come through those doors. No, we should be reaching out. We should be an evangelistic church, right? An outreach church. And that doesn't necessarily take place just at church. I mean, it can take place after church. It can take place at the donut shop. It can take place at the restaurants. You know, the taco shop at your workplace, with your family, with your friends. Because look what happened in Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it says, They were praising God. They were having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those that were being saved. The Lord does it, but they were d a dynamic church. Man, you, you couldn't keep people away from, you know, the, the, the things that were taking place at that church. I mean, there was good teaching, there was worship, there was love, there was caring, there was a close fellowship. You know, I, I mean, it, the church, the body of Christ, had become a place of hope. This should be a place of hope should be a hospital caring for people a beacon of light and uh, man, today there are so many churches that are closing down They're closing down you know with the epidemic and pandemic and everything else there's there's a lack of good teaching or spiritual poverty taking place in our society today and that shouldn't happen in Acts chapter 2, it says over 3,000 people that day accepted the Lord. And in, in chapter 4 of the book of Acts, over 5,000. And, and look at this, Acts chapter 5, verse 42. Every day, every day in the temple and from house to house, they kept right on preaching and teaching Jesus as the Christ. See, not just in the church, but day by day, house to house, evangelism was taking place. Man, we should be... It, it, the, the evangelism doesn't just take place in the, in the four walls of the church. It takes place out in the world. You are a light. You are the salt. We are to be God's mouthpiece. We don't have an exclusive club. Amen. It's offered up to anybody. For whoever will Amen. confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the church should be one of the, one of the four heartbeats is evangelism. When's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When's the last time you shared your faith with someone? You know? <clears throat> pretty sad what's going on in the church today the fourth heartbeat write this down the church is to be a fellowshipping church a fellowshipping church there's a balance there as a church body worship instruction evangelism fellowship you know, that's our objective. That's our goal. It brings honor and glory to the Lord. Sad thing happened. And I, I've been to England and 
some of the big churches there. <gasps> millions, millions of dollar churches. Big cathedrals. And there's one place called Westminster Abbey. You ever hear of that? It was a thriving church at one point in time. I mean, hundreds and thousands were flocking to that church. And there was a story about a tour group that was touring the Westminster Abbey. Everybody goes and takes a tour of the Westminster Abbey in London. Great old church. After the tour was over, the guide asked if anyone had any questions. Anybody have any questions? Well, this lady from Iowa raised her hand and said, I've got a question. <laughs> Here was her question. Has anybody been saved in this church lately? And the tour guy's mouth just kind of dropped. Has anybody been saved in this church lately? And it was there was silence. The tour guide didn't know what to say. There was silence. The church had become dead. It was a dead church great building beautiful building but it was dead spiritually and I hope that we never become dead spiritually never Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25 he said go and bear fruit when you stand before Christ are you going to be bearing fruit? Are your sins forgiven? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You know, are you growing in your relationship with him? Are you experiencing a spiritual revival in your heart on a daily basis? John 15, 16. It says, oh, let's read it. John 15, 16. I always like to take you back to God's word. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. That's an appointment by Jesus. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. This I command you, that you love one another. Is there any fruit in your life? You know, are you glorifying God in your time and your talent and your abilities and, you know, your finances and everything else? Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. Close with this. Matthew 25, verse 23. The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave, servant. You were faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. Lord, I just pray for all of us, God, that we would go and bear fruit. God, that we'd be a worshiping church, a teaching church, an evangelistic church. God, we'd be in your word on a daily basis. We'd be a praying church. And that's, the church is the body of Christ. That's for every one of us. Go and bear fruit. I command you, go and bear fruit. Go and love one another. That's what Jesus said. That's our marching orders. Our marching orders are right there. Lord, that after we finished our lives on this earth, we would hear those words of praise and honor. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master joy of the Lord. Thank you, Lord.
there's anyone here that is not experiencing the joy of the Lord, it starts right now tonight. You've been backsliding. You're the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. God's speaking to your heart. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. Hey, that dumb pastor speaking to you tonight. That's my word, Jesus says. It does not return void. And you need to ask God's forgiveness. You need to repent of something in your life. Raise your hand right now and say, yep, that's me, Lord. I need to repent. I need to ask God's forgiveness. I need healing in my life. Many online, many here tonight. We need to start fresh. We need to start new with Jesus tonight. We need a revival in our souls. This world's trying to put you down and condemn you. You need a revival in your soul. God, we need a revival in our, our souls. It starts with us. A fresh touch of your spirit that we'd be on fire for you. We couldn't wait to get into your word. We couldn't wait to get into worship and Stir prayer. Up, Lord Jesus. Can't wait to go out and tell others about you. Awesome, Lord Jesus. God, amen. Man, some of us are, the heartbeat's grown old. The heartbeat's got dim. can barely hear it. God, some of us need pacemakers. Spiritual pacemakers. Touch us with the power of your Holy Spirit tonight, right now. I want a revival in my soul. Let's all stand. This is my commandment that you love one. That your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. That your joy may.
That beat perfectly. <laughs> Bang! That's how you know it's over. Hey, God bless you guys. Amen. Go and live it out. Amen. Doesn't do any good if we don't live it out. Live it out. Prove to be his disciples by your love for him and your love for one another. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night. We'll see you next week or Tuesday night or Wednesday night, Lord willing. God bless. We need a fresh wind, fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Fresh wind. We need a fresh wind, fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your prayer.
Right, yeah. You, yeah, I was just telling my friends, you, you, you and your, your wife will be up there praising the Lord. Triple A. 